The Jewish people have returned to Judah from their Babylonian exile, and right away they make the Lord their priority in life as they begin to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. They're filled with a sense of joy and enthusiasm. It isn't long before they've completed the foundation for the temple. But with that, unfortunately, they're discouraged, they're opposed, and the work comes to a screeching halt. This opposition arose from ungodly people in that area, known as Samaritans. These adversaries, well, they don't want the Jewish people back in the promised land, and and they don't want them reestablishing the worship of the God of Abraham. So they're going to try everything they possibly can to discourage the Jewish people. They even threaten bodily harm. Well, their discouragement and opposition succeeded. The people are so disheartened, so discouraged that they abandoned any other work or further work on the temple, and and they stopped that work now for the next 15 years. Well, now we're here in chapter 5 in Ezra during the days of the Persian king Darius. And the Lord comes in and encourages his people to return to this important reconstruction project. And God sends them this encouragement through two sources. First, they're encouraged by God's prophets. Chapter 5 and verse 1 says this, Now the prophets Haggai and Zechariah, the son of Iddo, prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel who was over them. Now, eventually, we're going to get to their messages, which have been recorded in Scripture in the books of Haggai and Zechariah. But for now, they they come along to encourage the people to overcome their personal fears and concerns and finish the job. They understand that, that as the people make the Lord their priority, God will take care of the rest. Kind of reminds me of Hudson Taylor, uh, the missionary to China who encouraged his missionary team back in the 1800s as they faced physical threats and financial difficulties. He used to say to them, if you are obeying the Lord, all the responsibilities rest with him. I like that. Well, fortunately, the people here respond in faith and obedience. Verse 2 tells us, they arose and began to rebuild the house of God that is in Jerusalem, and the prophets of God were with them, supporting them. Now, beloved, this doesn't mean all their problems went away. In fact, the opposition immediately heats up. Tadanai, the Persian governor responsible for this region, comes around and and asks them, you know, who gave you the authority to build this temple? He even wants to know the names of the leaders involved. Now, this is nothing less than a threat. But this time, the people don't stop the work. The continued encouragement from God's prophets, Haggai and Zechariah, is exactly what they need to keep going. Well, now there's a second source of encouragement, and that frankly comes from God's providence. The word providence refers to the way God moves people and events to fulfill his ultimate purposes. This is God's uh, way of demonstrating he is the ultimate chess player as he moves history in his direction. Well, Governor Tatanai uh, sends off a letter to King Darius hoping that Darius will shut down this reconstruction project of the temple. But God is going to providentially use this letter to benefit his people. Now, this letter from Tatanai is clever. He's trying to prove to Darius that the Jewish people are rebellious, they're up to no good. So he quotes the Jewish leaders in this letter to Darius. In other words, he's saying, King Darius, you need to know this is what these people are saying. Verse 11, they're saying, we are the servants of the God of heaven and earth, and we are rebuilding the house that was built many years ago. But because our fathers had angered the God of heaven, he gave them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the Chaldean, who destroyed this house. However, 
In the first year of Cyrus, king of Babylon, Cyrus the king made a decree that this house of God should be rebuilt. Now, Governor Tatani is hoping that Darius is going to smell treason in their words. You see, they referred to themselves, he writes, as the servants of the God of heaven, not King Darius. Tatani also includes a reference to King Cyrus making a decree that the temple should be rebuilt. Well, Tatani doesn't believe a pagan king like Cyrus would decree such a thing. So he's, he's essentially asking Darius to go search those royal archives to prove, well, that never happened. But guess what? Here in chapter 6, Darius, he orders this search, and they find the proclamation of King Cyrus. And with this, God is going to change everything in Darius's mind. So King Darius, he, well, he writes a, a letter back to Tad and I. I love this letter. He demands here in verse 7, Let the work on this house of God alone. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews rebuild this house of God on its site. <laughs> Tad and I's letter completely backfires. God had indeed moved Cyrus years earlier to release the Jews to rebuild the temple and to keep this proclamation over there in the royal archives. And that's not all. Darius also surprisingly demands financial support from Governor Tadani. His letter back to him says here in verse 8, Moreover, I make a decree regarding what you, Tadani, shall do for these elders of the Jews for the rebuilding of this house of God. The cost is to be paid to these men in full and without delay from the royal revenue, the tribute of the province. In other words, Tad and I, I want you to start signing all the checks to cover the bills on this building project. And if that isn't enough, Darius further demands here in verse 9, And whatever is needed, bulls, rams, or sheep, for burnt offerings to the God of heaven, let that be given to them day by day without fail. And then you have this wonderful P.S. here at the bottom of the letter in verse 10, where Darius asks the Jewish people to pray for him and for his family. Wow, can you, can you see God's providence in all of this? God turns the hostile actions and intentions of the governor completely around. And in four and a half years, the temple is rebuilt and all the bills are paid by Governor Tatani. Well, this calls for a celebration. The temple is dedicated with various offerings. The priests and Levites are all set in order for the service of the Lord. And verse 18 here emphasizes that everything was accomplished according to what is written in the book of Moses. One month later, the people celebrate the Passover here in verse 19. And along with it, verse 22, they celebrate the seven-day feast of unleavened bread. Frankly, it's hard to imagine this season of joy, which is now celebrated in Jerusalem. In fact, chapter 6 ends with this theme of joy here in verse 22. The Lord had made them joyful and had turned the heart of the king so that he aided them in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. God had sent the two sources of encouragement to the people, the prophets of God and the providence of God. Beloved, I want you to keep that in mind today. These are the same encouragements you and I have this very day. When discouragement comes and knocks on your door, when you encounter enemies of the gospel who want to stop you from living for God, when you experience opposition, a, a discouraging word, you need to listen to the prophets. That is, you need to listen to God's inspired word. It's going to encourage you to remain steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. I want you to also be encouraged by the providence of God. 
knowing that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose, Romans 8, 28. Now, that doesn't mean that life automatically becomes easier. It it might get harder, but it does remind us that our ultimate security is in the Lord who is fitting all things together according to his purposes for your life and for mine. Well, until next time, beloved, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.